Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix. Fairly usual Mexican street, except it's, it's the paddock. They do things differently here in Mexico. Um, what a paddock, what a place. Just a joy uh, to be back here. Got in on Tuesday night, spent all day yesterday in museums and just enjoying the culture and the history and it's so mega. And the tacos and the churros. Let's get on with it. And two Mercedes, Steve, where Lewis Hamilton can wrap up a sixth Formula One World Championship this weekend. The mathematical permutations are fairly complicated, depending on if he gets fastest lap or not, or wins or where. But winning right now isn't actually front and centre for him. He doesn't think that Mercedes are here uh, as favourites. Oh, we've heard that one before. But since the summer break, actually, they haven't been favourites at many of the circuits that we've come to this weekend. Ferrari with their straight line speed, Red Bull with their recent history here, potentially looking the stronger outfits going into the race. But that's not all. Look up in the sky, grey clouds, rain expected throughout the weekend, which could throw uh, a very real spanner in the works. Um, it's been a, talking about spanners in the works, it's been a, 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 an interesting week for Lewis Hamilton. Social media comments, um, well-intentioned, the social media comments have landed him in some hot water. Is, is he being hypocritical and all of these things? He, he addressed all of those actually in the press conference. Uh, today, I wanted to talk to him about the, the race and side of things. And he actually spoke very well, very eloquently about yeah, he's a racing driver and yes, he races racing cars and flies to 21 countries, you know, racing a year, but how he's trying in his personal life to, you know, cut out single use plastics and be more mindful actually of the of the world that, that he inhabits. And, you know, if he can use his platform for good, well, why shouldn't he? You know, I think it's a very noble. And I think a lot of people here sort of share that. There's a very noble cause. Um, so yeah, so uh, he, he addressed that in the press conference. So if you're wondering why we didn't talk to him about it in the, in the, in the, in the pen, we only get a couple of questions. So I thought you'd rather hear about the racing um, than about plant-based diets and single-use plastics. Um, Valtteri Bottas um, spoke earlier today as well. Obviously loved getting back on top step of the podium in Japan. Said he was a little bit lucky with his start because he reacted to Seb's jump start, which meant that he got the perfect start because he just launched as the lights went out, uh, which allowed him to get into the lead of the race and pretty much control things from there. Right, let's talk to Lewis. Could be six titles this weekend. Is he thinking about it? No, I don't think about that. And honestly, I, didn't, I don't think it's possible. In my mind, it's not possible this weekend. Um, so I just look at doing, trying to do the best job I can, as always. I take it same, same as every race. I do want to win the Grand Prix. It's, it's a tall order for us because it's a track we've always struggled at. But... I like to think nothing's impossible, so, um, and I think the racing is relatively good here, so if we can make our tyres last, if we can get our car into a, a nice window, we can have a shot at potentially winning, so that's my goal. The Ferraris have come on thick and fast since the summer break. Are they unbeatable this weekend from what you've seen since, uh, since Spa? Uh, I don't know, because it's been confusing, you know, they're quick, they've been quick on long, uh, low downforce circuits, long straights, and then all of a sudden they're quick on uh, then they weren't good in Hungary, they were terrible in, in Budapest, miles off, with, with a circuit that needs a lot of downforce. And, but then they've come to other races shortly after that and they've found so much time and nothing looks like it's changed massively on the car. So it's always, I don't really know what's happening there. Um, all I can do is just trying to focus on, on, on us. They'll be quick on the straights here, which that one big straight might make it quite a big difference. We could lose half a second just on that straight alone, who knows. But um, all I can do is try and make sure I get more, everything and more out of my car. And that's going to be our, our goal. And we'll find out when we get out there if it's enough or not. You know, there's some races where you would expect, like this race, them to be really quick and then they don't work out so well. So let's hope that's the case. <laughs> the advances they've made through this season, well, certainly since the mid part of the season, have been, have been pretty big. Uh, are you surprised by the advances they've made in comparison to the steps that Mercedes have, have made this year? Um, I think it's... It, it is definitely su kind of surprising. Obviously, we, as, as I said, we went through they went through a couple of difficult races towards the end of the break. I don't know if they came with a new engine, as far as I'm aware. But you know, some of their engines, even the ones that have still been racing previously, have come up with a, an upgrade and faster than before. And just from our, once our engine comes out, it doesn't improve at all through its power range. It is what it is, and but theirs seems to change. Um, so that's a bit odd. And, but then they have obviously added more downforce. I think they've understood the characteristics of the car more and got it in a better sweet spot. 
um, which is good for them and, and we just need to fight harder. That's all I can say. And so to Ferrari, potentially the favourites coming here to the Mexican Grand Prix. Charles uh, Leclerc talked earlier today, said he was, uh, well, he agreed with the penalty that the team got during the race, said it would have been wrong for them not to have been penalised uh, given, you know, his sort of his little moment with Max and the trailing wing and all of that and the damage that he picked up. So, uh, yeah, he is... Uh, now accepting uh, of the penalty he received in Japan two weeks ago. Let's talk, though, to Sebastian Vettel. It hasn't been the easiest of years for him or for Ferrari, but things turning around for them after that summer break. And as I said, coming into here very much, certainly in the eyes of Mercedes, uh, race favourites. Well, it was about time. <laughs> no, but uh, certainly, you know, we didn't start the season where we wanted to. And, uh, yeah, I think it's important that we made the steps. Also looking forward to next year. We did improve our car, the feeling is that the car is better. I think we do have a strong package which um, hopefully puts us level with them you know, for, for the last four races because I think that's what it will need to, to fight for, for victories. How hard is it to keep your motivation, to keep your, sort of, your, your spirit high when things aren't quite going as you, as you, even with all your experience and age? And... Um, well, it's super tough in the morning you know, to get up. Uh, and find the point when you're so old, you know. <laughs> I shouldn't have said age, should I? I should have just said experience. <laughs> but um, no, it's not that hard because actually once you get in the car, you know, you stop thinking and you just uh, drive the car and you enjoy that. I still enjoy that. I think as long as I have that feeling, that's, that's fine. Um, so I don't need to worry too much. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly it's not ideal. Obviously, uh, we wanted to uh, stop them from their winning streak this year. It didn't happen. They deserve uh, the success they have. Uh, and uh, the same game is on for, for next year. And we know that the advances that came were, were part of that 2020 package that was brought forward. That's got to give you some, you know, some really good feelings that the, that the team, everything's going in the right... So they, 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 it seems that they were, it was a 2020 thing or a notion that was sort of brought forward a little bit faster than it should have been. I don't know what was the communication, <laughs> but... Um, no, if I so, you always, it's try, a you always try to bring whatever you can and you, if you can bring things forward, that's always great. So, uh, you know, we are pushing as hard as we can. So, um, yeah, obviously uh, we hope that these four races will uh, make even more clear what we're lacking and we can uh, use the, the time wisely over winter to come back stronger. And so do a driver who could very much be in contention this weekend. Max Verstappen and Red Bull Racing always go well here. At least they have in history when they had that very high rake concept car. It really suited this track. Uh, will the Honda engine suit this track? Will the car suit the track? Interesting murmurs coming out of the Verstappen camp over the last few weeks that the team maybe hasn't made the steps through the season that they would want to see. Max wants to be fighting for race wins consistently for world championships. And interestingly, um, as was made, made clear, um, I can't remember who pointed it out actually the other day, Lewis, Seb and Max all out of contract at the end of next year. Um, so how they go from this year into next and furthermore into 2021 when the new regs are announced, uh, what will they be? Um, yeah, where do they end up? Do they stay where they are or do they take a gamble? It's going to be fascinating to see how the driver market sort of plays itself out over the next 18 months. You can't see it because you can't see wind on a camera, but it's picking up. Um, actually, probably, look, look at that. See? It's going to chuck it down, isn't it? Shall I speed these up a little bit so we don't get wet? All right, Max Verstappen, here he is. We expect it to be one of the more competitive weekends for you, but will that hold true this season, do you think? It will be definitely uh, more difficult. Um, but also when you, you look at uh, last year, of course we won, I don't know, about 18 seconds or something. But uh, when you look at the race, I think Ferrari, especially Sepp, he was a bit stuck in the beginning of the race and then actually they had quite good pace and I think this year they are more competitive so um, yeah it's definitely going to be quite a bit harder but I think um, yeah we can still uh, we can still have a good result. Is this your best chance of a, of a win in the last four? Difficult to say but um, yeah we'll, we'll definitely try to go for it. Um, the team this year has obviously uh, come on in leaps and bounds with the with the Honda engine but has it made from a team perspective from an aero perspective the steps forward that you wanted to see? Um, well, I think uh, as a driver, you of course always want more power. I think that's very natural. Uh, but uh, I think so far we have made good gains. And uh, actually, when you compare us to Mercedes and, uh, and of course Renault, I think we look very competitive. Just uh, yeah, Ferrari, which uh, stands out a bit. But 
or quite a bit actually. But uh, in general, I think yeah, we made good improvements. Also reliability-wise, we have been really strong. Actually, we never had an issue in the race, so that's uh, that's very positive. And um, yeah, we just uh, keep pushing forward. Renault are one of the big talking points this weekend. Nico Hulkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo both scored points in Japan after battling drives following a disappointing qualifying session. However, post-race, racing point, went to the stewards uh, and put in a complaint about a brake bias system on the car, on the Renault, uh, that they believe contravened regulation. So detailed was the complaint that it had to be heard outside of the race weekend to give Renault enough time to defend themselves. Now, you may have seen the decision. It's fairly complicated, but to simplify it down into layman's terms, the team was found not guilty of contravening technical regulations, but were found guilty of contravening sporting regulations, meaning that the drivers were disqualified from the race and that system won't now be able to be used for the remainder of the season. Uh, Renault told us before their drivers came out that neither would be talking about that system, how it operates and all that kind of stuff. So. We unfortunately won't be giving you any pearls of wisdom from the drivers on that, but we will hear from both of them uh, today um, just about the disappointment really on losing those points. If it changes anything for them from a procedural perspective within the car uh, moving forward and whether now they've lost those points and McLaren gained such a big uh, total um, over the last couple of races, whether that puts them realistically out of contention for fourth place in the Constructors' Championship. It is what it is now, you know, we move on, we move forward, uh, we've obviously got a weekend ahead of us now and focus on that and, and get the best from, from here what we can. The battle for fourth, is it over? you still got a shot. Yeah, I think that's, it's, you know, getting more and more unlikely. Um, the gap must be 40, 50 points or something now, it, it's pretty, pretty damn big and it's not that McLaren, you know, that they have a that they're short on performance. So uh, that looks, I think, to be more and more difficult. I think we just need to focus on ourselves, you know, get the best out of the car. The pace actually in, um, in Suzuka was really good in the race, but obviously we were yeah, pretty compromised by very poor qualifying and then coming from behind, it's never easy. But uh, the race pace actually, you know, looked very strong and I think we could have we could have challenged McLaren had we not qualified so bad. Promising for this weekend? I think so. I think every, every track this year we more or less, you know, uh, definitely inside the top 10 and we can compete and, and fight for, for points. Post Japan, uh, obviously we all know uh, what went down. How disappointed are you obviously to lose the points that you got in Japan and does it change anything uh, from a process perspective or anything uh, from driving perspective going forward for you? Uh, disappointed, yeah, because it was it was a good weekend for us. Well, good Sunday afternoon for us. Um, and yeah, a lot of points, you know, eight points is, is pretty big, especially for me this year. That's yeah, we've only had a few times where we've been inside the top six. Um, so frustrating for sure. And yeah, I guess just disappointed that that was the outcome. Um, but it's done. I feel I feel already like it. Yeah, the race was so long ago now, nearly two weeks that I feel we're already past it anyway. So focus on here, use this race as some more motivation. Um, I feel like, yeah, our back's been up against the wall quite a few times this year, but uh, it's just honestly that excites me. And it's yeah, of course, I'd love the points, but We'll move on. The objective was always fourth in the championship for quite a while this season. Is that now unrealistic? Yeah, I would say not impossible, but unrealistic. You know, and I think that's that's the truth. McLaren look strong. They got a good buffer. They have been strong on pretty much every circuit. So, you know, they they've un unless we looked at the next few circuits saying, oh, they're not McLaren's type of circuits, we'd probably say, oh, we, we still got a chance. But, you know, I think we can still beat them on some of these tracks. But we're not going to be. I think taken a, a huge amount of points away from them um, if, if everything's kind of running smoothly. So we'll see. Try and beat them on track and see what happens at the end. But um, obviously, this with the penalty or the, with the disqualification puts us more back into fifth and sixth. So at the very least, you want to consolidate fifth and get on up there. It's a track on which you excel. Are you looking forward to this one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very much. I actually after the after the news yesterday with the Japan stuff. I, uh, I've watched quite a few of my onboards from here last year, the pole lap, and that's that's got me all giddy and excited. So uh, yeah, ready to get after it. The Haas F1 team have not had an easy 2019. Four races left, not only for them to get on top of this year's car, but to hopefully iron out those creases that will make their 2020 car not suffer from the same ills. We spoke to Kevin Magnussen, catch up before the Mexican Grand Prix. It's not been our best track in the past, but uh, you never know. I mean, in 2017, we qualified dead last and we got P8, so you never know. 
What makes this place so unique, both for the car and for the driver? The main thing is the like the ambient pressure, so it's the, the thin air, which means we run the cars with maximum downforce and have more or less the same load aerodynamically downforce wise as Monza. So that's a, a strange thing. So you get you know a tough time on on the brakes, cooling them, cooling the the engine and oils in different places. So you have to open up the car and it becomes inefficient. So there's a lot of uh, big challenges aerodynamically on this track. Only four races left. Um, how heavy is the workload for you guys through the remaining practice sessions to iron out any of the issues that still remain with this car to you know, carry none of the bad parts through to 2020? Uh, I think it's going to be more or less the same as it's been so far. Just uh, experimenting while I was still trying to set set it up for a good, you know, a good race, good quality and race. So. Uh, not too different, I would say, just to uh, carry on the work that we've done, which I think has been pretty good and positive. Happy times down here at McLaren for both Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz. Lando spoke very well, actually, earlier today um, about keeping their foot down, keeping the pressure on for that battle for fourth place in the Constructors' Championship that we've spoken about, obviously, uh, as regards Renault seemingly out of it but uh, Lando very much aware that he can't lose focus and they're going to have to push to the end of the season we're going to talk to Carlos uh, similarly um, you know I think you, you can really sense how happy they all are uh, with the way the season's gone the way it's heading um, and the the result that looks to be coming their way now in the constructors title I've always I don't know I've always felt very nicely received here in Mexico probably Spanish speaking helps but um yeah, since 2015, 2013, that I came to do a show run in the middle of the city. I don't know, I've always had a very good feeling with them. And do you think you're going to go well this weekend? Because Checo certainly thinks that you guys are going to be the, the ones to beat. Yeah, well, uh, recently I must say McLaren has been having a bit of an edge in the midfield and um, we hopefully will try to keep that up. Um, there's not a clear pattern because I must say Singapore, Suzuka, we did have an edge, but then Russia, we didn't. So. Um, Hopefully here we can confirm that edge. Um, it's not going to be easy. Checo has those two tenths advantage of playing at home. Uh, Force India has always, well, racing point has always been good here. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. And what do you think you can do? How well? Mm. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully a, a good result like in Suzuka would be ideal. Uh, top fives. They are very expensive nowadays, but uh, we, we're going to keep trying to be leading the, the pack, the midfield pack, and then if someone fails at the top, we will try and get that. You talk about the result in Suzuka, obviously disqualification of the Renault since that time. Gives you guys quite a buffer in the fight for fourth place, but with only four races left, can you afford to, to take your eye off them? Uh, no, I think we all, always need to keep an eye on, the, on them, but uh, I must say that since the summer break, we. We've been trying to focus in ourselves, not in Renault, and that has worked very well. We've been trying to bring upgrades to the car that make the this year's car, but mainly also next year's car, a step forward, try and learn, not even if that involved a bit of a risk in in uh, spending a bit of FP1s or FP2s trying to understand, but that, that approach honestly has worked, worked well and we need to keep it. Always a big race weekend for Racing Point, or Force India as was. Uh, Regardless, Sergio Perez's team, Checo Perez, uh, national hero, um, superstar. Actually, we started just last time talking to Carlos Sainz about how many people cut turn out to see him. But Checo, it's Bedlam. You see him move from his motorhome just to go to the toilet, and he's just surrounded by people wanting autographs, wanting selfies, uh, all of that. Big week for him, big week for the team. It hasn't suited them of late, uh, but will 2019 be a different matter? Are you exhausted yet? How intense has the week been of media? It's been a bit uh, exhausting here yeah, this weekend. It's very intense uh, on my side. But I got used to it, you know, it's the fifth year <laughs> that I've been doing this. Uh, now it's starting to, to get a bit, uh, a bit better. Now it's time to focus on with the engineers to do the work and, and, and yeah, just be, be on it. Cool. Um, Obviously, there was a disqualification for Renault after the last race, which means you guys are now pretty close to being able to fight for that fifth place in the Constructors' Championship. What would that mean for the team after you know everything that it's gone through over the last 18 months to be able to fight back into that position? Yeah, it will be, will be great, you know. Obviously, we, we, we're still a bit far for, for Renault, but um, I think the, 
the immediate target is Sao Rosso. Um, now we are not that far from them, so hopefully we can outscore them from now until the end of the of the year. That will be the, the main target for us. It's a tricky one for you guys here last year. Do you think it will be any different this year? Um, no, I expect a difficult one here. Um, it's a track that uh, on paper is not, is not that great. It's not that great for us. I think McLaren should be extremely strong. Uh, you have the Reynolds, you have the Alphas, the Toro Rosso. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a difficult one. But um, as always, we, we will try our best. And especially for me, it's a very important weekend, you know, to try to, to make a lot of people happy this weekend. After five years, like when you're going through the base concept for the car for each year, do you ever sort of look at it and go, guys, can we just get get a car that's absolutely nailed in for the Mexican weekend? I don't care about the rest. Just just for this weekend, can we have something? Well, if it works this, this weekend, it basically works everywhere else because it means that you have a very good load, very good mechanical grip, and uh, that's something we've been lacking uh, this, this year. So I think we've improved, uh, so I, I would expect to be a bit better this weekend. To Alfa Romeo now, who's lead driver Kimi Raikkonen turned 40 this week. I asked him if you'd told the 30-year-old Kimi Raikkonen that at 40 he'd still be racing in Formula 1, what do you think 30-year-old Kimi would have said? And he said he wouldn't have been impressed because he wanted to be retired by the time he was 30. And he tried it once. Like Godfather Part 3, just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Not a great film to quote, is it? Not the best of the three. Right. We're going to talk to Antonio Giovinazzi, though. Having a great time. A really great last few races. Um, Japan was hard uh, for the team, but uh, Giovinazzi is, I think, in, in the, the, the best form uh, of his year so far. And obviously, we're going to ask the question again, as we will do every week until he has an answer for us of what uh, stands in his immediate future uh, in 2020. Mexican Grand Prix, will it be kind to you, this circuit, do you think? Uh, we'll see, we'll see. I think uh, it's a different track uh, with the altitude and everything, so we'll see tomorrow. And uh, it's a track not new for me. I did already some FP1 here, so yeah, we'll see. Hopefully we can uh, we can be fast on quality, but especially in the race, we need to be more fast and uh, try to get some points on Sunday. What's the objective for the last four races? Points, you know, this is the, the target uh, for me and for the team. So yeah, we need to try to get some. And obviously next year, we ask you this every week. <laughs> Any closer? <laughs> uh, the same of Suzuka, you know, I need to still just uh, pushing and uh, be focused on my target. And then, and then we'll see. To Toro Rosso now and to Pierre Gasly, who is having a, a resurgence uh, in form since leaving Red Bull and coming back here, finding his feet once again. Uh, a great time in Japan for him, a great race result, uh, a great race actually, um, finally settling back in with the team. Um, and getting rid of those sort of nightmares from the start of the season. Much to be happy about for him. In the fight now, very real fight that they have with Renault for fifth place in the constructors. Japan was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was great, yeah. yeah. I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, eights, eights on track and then, yeah, now with Renault disqualification, we get seventh place. So, uh, yeah, best results since I came back five races ago. So, uh, yeah, happy with these points. And only four races left of the season. What do you think you can maximize from, from these four? Well, I think, yeah, just keep doing the, the job we are doing. I think I'm really happy with the, yeah, the way we work with the team. Um, managed to, to score point three races out of the last five. So, uh, yeah, it's tight battle in the championship between racing points. Um, Renault as well ahead. So, uh, yeah, it will be important to, yeah, just try to grab all the points we can until, uh, until Abu Dhabi. Because fifth is there for the taking, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's there. It's there in the in the championship. We know like Renault are fast, and uh, it's not like things are gonna change after uh, what they have found. So yeah, I still expect them to be really strong. Um, so it's gonna be tight, and uh, yeah, we'll try everything we can. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a tight battle. Finally, then to Williams, and we're gonna finish with Robert Kubica because the last few races have given a hint, an impression that all is not rosy between him and the team. Pretty much ever since it was announced that he wouldn't be continuing with them for next year. Comments have started to come out, little things have started to slip. Russia, his retirement from the race that he wasn't happy with, uh, all the excuses, all the reasons given to him for it. And then uh, last time out in Japan, crashed in qualifying, and his comments afterwards, again, they were cryptic in their nature, but started to come out in the wash in which he'd said, Decisions had been taken, uh, not just that went against what he wanted, but that he hadn't been informed of. Um, big, bold claims. Um, and again, that feeling that 
things aren't quite as rosy uh, as 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 we thought. Um, certainly for Robert, uh, not the the happy uh, environment uh, that he had hoped for. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, it will be a first time uh, around here uh, with Formula One car. Uh, I have been here last year. Actually, I have been here uh, 2008 uh, on an event uh, with BMW. But it was a totally different track then. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was a bit different track, and uh, yeah, I don't remember a lot, and I did only a few laps. So uh, yeah, I will, uh, we'll have to wait uh, until the second uh, free practice as uh, Nicholas is driving in FP1. So. Uh, and try to prepare as much as you can. Uh, of course, uh, I think the general characteristic of the track, uh, or let's say all of this uh, this place, is uh, actually the reduced downforce because of the altitude. So I will have to see how it will feel. Now, how are things with you and the team going into these last four races? Because it's not been an easy couple of Grand Prix. Yeah, it's all okay. I think. Uh, we, we are all here to, to give our maximum with what we will have and uh, and of course it's, uh, it's not an easy season for us but uh, still uh, uh, we, we are all passionate and, uh, and uh, professional so uh, uh, you know we will try to do our best and uh, as I said it, it's difficult to know what to expect I, I mean we know what to expect uh, so uh, it will not be easy one but uh, yeah let's uh, let's try to to do it uh, as best as we can. Your retirement in Russia uh, obviously led to some questions. Uh, Japan, uh, you made some comments uh, as well, obviously about certain things being changed, decisions being made, uh, either without your knowledge um, or certainly uh, without being sort of uh, asked. Are all these things now resolved? Are you in a, a good place knowing that, that, that you are um, on the same level with, with, with what the team wants? Well, it doesn't really matter if I'm on the same level or not. I mean, uh, in the end, uh, I have to do my job. And, uh, and uh, yeah, as you said, the, the last couple of races were not, uh, I would say, ideal uh, for different reasons. But uh, as I said, we, we are all professionals and, uh, and we, we try to do our best. And uh, I hope uh, we will be in the position at least to, to have uh, a good f last four weekends with uh, trying to to do our our job, but also try to enjoy and uh, and uh, hopefully we will we will uh, we'll have a good one. So that is your lot from Paddock Pass here in Mexico City. Uh, as you may be able to see, or you may not, uh, the weather is coming in. Uh, rain expected throughout this weekend, which could make it even more fun. Can't wait! It is uh, it's such a great event. This. The vans are amazing, it's electric, the atmosphere, uh, and the track is tricky and it is challenging. Will it be Ferrari in the ascendancy? Will it be Red Bull? Or have Mercedes thrown us all off the scent and actually be uh, the quickest? I don't think they will be. I think if Lewis Hamilton wants to wrap up the title this weekend, he's got a very big job on his hands. Uh, Ferrari and Red Bull, certainly, before the cars even get running are the ones we expect to be watching out for. Uh, that is your lot from Paddock Pass. Join us over the weekend uh, for everything from here uh, in Mexico City. For now, though, that's your lot.